stacking shelves in the kiln in the back, and whenever I fill the back all the way up, then I'm going to start working on the front and fill the front all the way up. side of the pots uh, from the glazing process. If there is uh, moisture in the pots and the pots get to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, the pots can actually blow up from uh, the boiling water that uh, would be inside of the pots. All right, so pilot light's lit. I will see you in the morning. Hi, so I'm back now. The kiln has been uh, preheating overnight with uh, one pilot light on one of the burners. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the other pilot light and uh, start kicking up the burners throughout the day to get this thing fired. Kilnout's now been firing for about eight hours today. We are doing what's called reduction firing. For those of you who enjoy chemistry, you'll really like what's happening in the kiln at this point. Reduction firing just refers to reducing oxygen in the kiln atmosphere. Now, whenever you heat with combustion or fire like we're doing uh, with this kiln, what happens is when you reduce oxygen, fire wants oxygen to survive, so it essentially looks for oxygen and it finds it and the clay and the glazes and sucks out these chemical glazes out of the, uh, the pottery. And it changes the physical appearance of the pottery, changes colors, changes surfaces. Now, the way that we know if we're getting proper reduction, as it's called, is by simply looking at flames that come out of the kiln when we pull bricks out of what we call the peepholes. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to look for not just uh, having a flame, but I look at the size of the flame, the color of the flame, the duration that the flame is coming out of the kiln. Always wear safety eyewear. And if it looks cool, it's even better.
Now the other thing that we check for whenever we're looking into the kiln is what we call the pyrometric cones. Which are these specially formulated pieces of clay that whenever the clay gets to a certain temperature, these cones actually melt and bend over. And that's how we can tell what the temperature of the clay and the glazes are. We are really close to temperature. When we're all finished, we simply just shut the kiln off and allow it to cool. For my kiln, this usually takes about two days till we can actually get into it and get the pots. Hey guys, so at this point, all of the pots have been fired. It's often said in a pottery studio that opening the kiln is like Christmas every time. You never know if the present will be good or bad, but it is definitely a surprise. The process of reduction firing, to reiterate, is to change the color and surface of glazes. One of the glazes I use is referred to as a copper red glaze. These are traditional Chinese glazes that only turn red under good reduction of oxygen levels within the kiln atmosphere. These glazes turn different uh, variances of red depending on the chemistry and the reduction levels within the kiln during the firing. In electric kilns, uh, with what's referred to as oxidation levels, this uh, red glaze actually turns kind of a minty green. But whenever you fire in a gas uh, kiln like we do, and you reduce oxygen during certain parts of the firing, those glazes, uh, if everything goes well, they'll turn red. If you have only mediocre or light reduction, copper red glazes will often turn whitish or grayish uh, either in different areas or throughout the entire pot, depending on pretty much the color of your clay. If it's white, probably porcelain. If it's gray that you're working with, you're working with stoneware, and the, uh, the glaze just didn't do what it was supposed to do because it didn't get proper reduction. One of the other glazes that I often use is uh, referred to as a Shino glaze. Shino glazes are traditional Japanese glazes that most people know of uh, to vary between orange and cream kind of colors. Now, uh, depending on how you apply the glaze, uh, how quickly you get that glaze into the kiln, how quickly you start firing the kiln, how uh, what the ox oxygen and oxygen deprivation levels are in the kiln, or the reduction as we call it, you can actually get that same glaze to uh, achieve what we call carbon trapping, which is just uh, wherever the glaze will uh, turn like black colors or even gold colors, iridescent colors. Now that only happens with really good reduction on top of all the other things which I listed previously. Well, this concludes our discussion on reduction firing. It's really cool that you could join us. Look for some more episodes really soon. I'm Jacob Grant, keep it wheeled. Thank you.